All right, hello everyone. Uh, this is Mrs. McCorkle. Hi. And Mr. Crayer, we're going to talk to you today about Toulmin's argumentative model so that when you're writing, you'll have a little bit more structure um, and you'll understand how paragraphs kind of work together. All right, so we're going to start with the three parts of argumentative writing. And you can really think that you can use all these parts in any type of writing you're doing. The first part um, is the claim. And the claim is really a debatable and controversial statement, okay? Um, and you can come with, up with that on your own, or an assertion that um, you hope to prove to either a listener or um, someone who's reading your writing. The second part of it is evidence. And this really can be personal experience, uh, stories, facts, um, an authority of some sort. It could be a quotation from the text that you're reading in your class. Uh, this can be a lot of different things, but you definitely want to check with your teacher beforehand so you know what kind of evidence your teacher wants you to use for the type of writing you're doing. The third part is something called a warrant. You may have heard that word before uh, in, our justice yeah. <laughs> in our justice system, but it's a little different <laughs> here. Um, the warrant in this model is the logical connection between the evidence that you're using and the claim that you're making. And you want to make sure your warrant is really strong and that it's clear to your reader. Okay. A lot of people are really good at figuring out a claim. Uh, a lot of you guys are good at making some sort of argument. And the evidence you can usually find, usually in school it's in the book somewhere, but the warrant is really crucial. It ties that claim and evidence together. And maybe it'll be a little bit more helpful if you see um, how it actually works. And since most people or your teachers are going to require you to do this with reading, I'm going to use that as an example. Um, you usually start with evidence, which is whatever you're reading in class, and then from there you develop a claim, and then that claim and evidence is supported by your warrant. So let's say you're reading and you see this sentence in the text. Mindy turned off the lights in her room and pulled out her black hat and broom. Right? From reading that sentence, you might come to the conclusion that she's evil or she's a witch. Right? But you have to be able to explain why you think she's evil or why, she th or why you think she's a witch. Maybe she's just trying to conserve energy. You never know. Okay? So you need a warrant, and the warrant you might provide here is witches are easy to spot due to their black hats, brooms, and fear of the lights. And so now you can see how that evidence comes first, you make a claim, and then you support that with your warrant. And you can see that there are lots of warrants that you could use. Someone yeah. might have a different warrant there. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you really do explain in your writing how you came to the conclusion that you made. Mm -hmm. Or you could say uh, your claim would be different too, which would change your warrant. So maybe you just say that um, Mindy is uh, she's very progressive and she wants to turn off and save energy. And instead of using a vacuum, she uses a broom. Okay, And then your warrant would look different for that as well. All right, so here we've made a little flow chart for you, so you can kind of see when you're reading, specifically for your English classes, how you would come up with these three parts of an argument. So first you're going to read and look for that evidence. You want to make sure when you're reading you're looking for very specific facts. A lot of times teachers will ask you for, to use very specific quotations and to include page numbers for those. So you're looking for what the author said or what a character said. From those, you're going to make an inference about what kind of claim or argument you could make about a character, or it could be a theme that you think that the author is developing um, by showing us you know, a symbol or setting. And finally, you're going to then think about how did you come to that claim? What was the reasoning you used to get there? Um, what, how did that help you make your logical link between the evidence and the claim? And one thing we should state right here, too, is we're talking about it with literature, but under evidence, it does say data right here. And so you'll be doing this in science, in history, in math. Uh, the evidence might not be a passage from a book, but it might be a little chart showing you, um, you know, how the evidence is correlated through time or something like that. And a lot of other fields use this as well. So this is a skill that you've probably already used before, but maybe didn't have the terminology to understand it. All right, so here's another kind of model of how you might think about it. Um, here you have your claim and your data, and between them, um, you have kind of balancing it, that warrant. And you want to remember, it still has to be logical. Sometimes you'll listen to other people, maybe politicians, for example, um, make claims and back it up with some data, and the data doesn't seem to be logically linked to that claim. <laughs> that doesn't make you look very good as a writer or as a speaker. Um, and you've seen people, I'm sure, on television criticize politicians for not having very strong warrants. They may not have used that word, but it definitely can happen. So you want to be very careful. That's a great point. Yeah, definitely. So make sure that all your parts are in balance there. Um, 
So we want to make sure also that we think about that uh, Toolman structures requires writers to test their ideas. So think through that warrant. Talk to your friends about it. Do you think that these two go together? Have your teacher look at what you've written so that you know you don't have any, um, any questionable warrants uh, in your writing. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go through kind of a personal example of not just looking at this in literature, but how it could pop up, you know, in just an everyday experience. Let's say for your evidence, uh, my boyfriend hasn't texted me back in six days, all right? You've seen this in your own personal life, but what are you going to conclude from this? You can claim a lot of different things are happening here, but let's assume that we're going to take this claim and be kind of paranoid and say, oh, he's breaking up with me. All right. Now, a lot of people might stop there, but we can't forget the warrant. We have to say, well, how is that a sign that he's breaking up with me? Your warrant then would be he's ignoring my text and me as a way to show he no longer wants to date me. And then so you see that that third step is very important, but you can also come to a different claim like... Um, like perhaps your boyfriend has been in Japan for the last six days. That and stuff he, happens. Yep. Yeah. He can't afford to text <laughs> message you right now. It's very expensive. Yeah. Or maybe his parents grounded him and he doesn't have his phone. And all these would lead to different warrants. Finally, now we're going to look at a text example, how you might use it with a book in an English class. You could also use it this way with perhaps your, your history text. So um, the first example we're going to look at is from The Hunger Games. Here is a quotation from The Hunger Games, District 12, where you can starve to death in safety. All right, so I'm going to read this quotation in the context of the book. And I'm going to think about, well, what might the author, Suzanne Collins, be saying here about District 12? And so I'm going to go forward and, and make the, the claim that perhaps she's saying that some kind of cruel or, um, I guess, structured leader is controlling District 12. And this leader or these leaders don't care about the people. Perhaps my warrant for that then is that people like need to be fed and protected and that by only pro providing protection, they're really cruelly treating uh, the people in that state. But they also are obviously keeping them safe. Mm -hmm. And you might just, just by reading that first sentence, you might, you, you kind of feel like something creepy is going on there. <laughs> and, and you probably need more than just this one sentence to come to the conclusion. You're not just going to randomly like open a page and then go, okay, this is my evidence here. But uh, as you're reading a whole story, you'll pull on maybe one specific line, but then you're using other um, evidence from throughout the book to understand that, okay, this is what's actually happening in District 12. And the other thing you'll find probably as you read through that entire book is, as you get more and more evidence about District 12, your claim or even your warrant might change. Oh, there could yeah. be more details yeah. about District 12 that could change it significantly. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of a quick overview of the Toolman argument. I'm going to go all the way back and hopefully you have a better idea of how the claim, evidence, and warrant kind of work together. See you next time. Adios.